Hi, and welcome to the Worldwide Center of Maths Problem of the Week. This week we have a linear algebra problem, and the problem is consider the subspace of R4, S. S is equal to the span of the vectors 1, 2, 1, 3, 3, 6, 3, 9, 1, 3, 5, 4, 2, 3, negative 2, 5. And then we're asked to find the basis for S. Uh, so to begin, the first thing that we want to do is take the vectors that span S and put them into a matrix. So taking the vectors and using them as column, columns to form this matrix, we now have this matrix. And what we can do is use uh, Gauss-Jordan elimination to find the reduced row echelon, echelon form of the matrix. Uh, so to begin, we're first just going to subtract the first row from uh, the other rows. So in terms of the second, third, and fourth row, for the second row, we want to subtract two times the first row. For the third row, we want to subtract one times the first row. And for the third row, we want to subtract three times the first row. Uh, so this is what we end up coming out with. And we're already getting pretty close to being in reduced row echelon form. Um, as you can see, in the second row, we have one, negative one. And uh, in the rows that follow, we have basically the exact same idea. So what we can do is just subtract the second row from the remaining third and fourth row. So subtracting four times row two and just subtracting row two, um, we can then continue on eliminating um, the different rows of the matrix. Uh, so what we come out with is 1, 3, 1, 2, 1, negative 1, and that's actually the row echelon form of the matrix. We can take one final step to get to reduced row, which is just subtracting the row 1, negative 1 from the first row. So now we have the reduced row echelon form of the matrix, or the RREF. And to find the basis, what we're going to look at is the columns that have the leading uh, ones in them. So obviously, this first column and this third column both have leading ones. And what we can tell about that is that column 1 and column 3, therefore, have to be linear and independent of each other. Um, and what we can say is that column 2 and column 4 actually are linear, linearly dependent of column 1 and column 3. Uh, so using the linearly independent columns, uh, we can find the basis from the original matrix that we wrote. So since these two columns are linear independent of each other, what that tells us is that those two columns also have to be linear independent of each other in the original matrix that we wrote. So in this original matrix, column 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, and column 3, 1, 3, 5, 4 are linear independent of each other and must be a basis for the subspace S. So what we can say is that a basis of the subspace S is uh, the vectors 1, 2, 1, 3, and the vector 1, 3, 5, 4. And what we're going to want to notice is that these, uh, this basis is not unique. Any two uh, vectors within the subspace S that are linear independent would uh, form a basis of that subspace. Um, so really, any multiple of uh, one of these vectors would be a subspace as well, or would, be, would form a basis as well. So that's all we have for you today for this week's Problem of the Week. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Please check out some more of our videos on YouTube. Check us out on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Thank you.